What's up everybody? My name is Ben. Welcome to this video where today we're going to be talking about the Orthea EL3. For your convenience, this video will be segmented. So check the description down below. We're going to have some timestamps for each one of the sections that we're going to be talking about here today. A little bit later in this video, we're going to have another one of my Orthea owner friends hop in and talk about the maintenance and general upkeep of these cars, as well as give a couple of tips and advice on maintaining these things. Without further ado, let's hop into this thing and show you all about the Orthea EL3. Okay, so let's get started. What you're looking at right here is a 1996 Honda Orthea, chassis code EL3. Just like a Civic with an EK designation or EJ, this is EL and 3 designating that it is the Highline model of all the variants. We'll talk more about that later. The Orthea was produced by Honda Japan for the Japanese market with year models ranging from 1996 all the way up to 2002 with a refreshed facelift for 1999 and up. Honda also developed a commercial van variant of the Orthea called the Partner. This vehicle shares a majority of body components with the Orthea, but lacks features such as like full-size trunk lights, painted bumpers, and the option for a twin cam engine. So the Orthea was actually made on Honda's sixth generation Civic platform, uh, also known as the EK Civic. The wheelbase on this is exactly the same as the EK Civic at 103.1 inches. Matter of fact, there are plenty of Orthia components that you may be familiar with if you've had previous experience with the same generation of Civic. The instrument cluster is interchangeable between the two, as well as several other Honda models of the same age. The dash bezel, while not entirely the same as the Civic, is still derived from the Civic and is interchangeable between the two. Still not convinced, the entire front clip can be switched between the Orthia and the Civic. All you need is a hood, fenders, bumper, and headlights, and you'll have yourself a makeshift four-door EK Civic wagon. The Orthia was designed as a more active lifestyle vehicle than the sibling, the Accord wagon, which was also sold in Japan at the same time as the Orthia. The theory being that the option of all-wheel drive and more outdoorsy type dealer accessories would entice potential buyers over an Accord. Overall, the Orthia is a vehicle that meshes practicality with luxury and even a bit of sportiness. As a total package, it presents itself as a wonderful daily driver, both in its homeland and across the globe. Moving under the hood of the Orthea, you'll find one of two available engines for this car. The uh, first of which being a 1.8 liter dual overhead cam Honda engine, as well as the one you see here in this one, which is the higher end two liter variant. The 1.8 liter variant is rated at 138 horsepower, and the two liter has just slightly more at 143 horsepower. Peak power is achieved similarly between the two at 6,300 RPM for the 1.8 and 6,200 RPM for the 2.0. Interestingly, the torque curve for the 2.0 has a significant bump over the 1.8 around 2,500 RPM. This allows for a smoother feeling around town and offers easier overtaking without the car having to downshift in most cases. One distinct advantage that the 1.8 has over the 2 liter is in the fuel efficiency department. Average fuel consumption with the 2 liter is stated at 26 miles per gallon, while the 1.8 averages 33 miles per gallon. The fuel tank size on the Orthea comes in at just under 14 gallons. One distinction to note is that the gas tank is not the same for the front wheel drive and all wheel drive variants. The front wheel drive models have a slightly smaller gas tank at 52 liters, and the all-wheel drive variant has a slightly larger gas tank at 53 liters. The tank design on the all-wheel drive models utilizes a jet pump as well as the main fuel pump due to the drive shaft splitting between the two halves of the tank. Surprisingly, both engine variants do not require the use of premium high-octane fuel. Moving on to the suspension now, the Orthea utilizes a unique array of components. Uh, for example, this front end assembly will be the same for both the front wheel drive and all wheel drive models. And it utilizes a lot of components from other Honda Acura vehicles. Like for instance, this strut comes out of a Acura Integra. 
It features the same wishbone design here, as well as the spring architecture being almost 100% the same. I can't confirm that it's 100% the same, but it is very likely. The rear of the Ortha uses rear trailing arm assemblies from the RD1 Honda CRV. The rear springs are also much stiffer, which makes hauling larger loads easier as the car won't sag as much. When driving around the car unloaded, you can really feel the difference from back to front. One of the most frequently asked questions we get about the Honda Orthia is if it comes in a manual. And the answer to that question is yes, but it is rather complicated. The manual was only available in front wheel drive variation with the 1.8. You could not get it with either the two liter, like you see here on this model, or with all wheel drive as well. It's incredibly hard to find at the auctions, but they are out there. Just might take a minute to find one. And of course, swap kits are available for these things just as they are for the Civic. Also, the automatic transmission has a couple things to note as well. Very unique and very quirky. One is that it'll hold its gear when ascending hills. Some folks might find this kind of alarming when it seems that the car does not shift up when climbing small hills but I can assure you this is normal operation of the transmission. Honda states that they did this to suppress wasteful shifting when climbing a slope, and that comes directly from their catalogs and manuals. The other key feature is that the car will actively perform some sort of engine braking when going downhill. While most modern cars coast down hills and are prone to picking up speed when doing so, even with the accelerator left untouched, the Orthia will actually begin to slow. And again, this is normal operation for this automatic transmission. One of the most satisfying things about the Orthia is the interior of it. This model features the standard stitching in the seats, which is absolutely phenomenal. It is this contrasting blue and green stitching. Very 1990s aesthetic. Not just this one, but all Orthias came with this stitching on the seats and the door cards, except for the special Aero Edition models, which I will talk about shortly. For now, let me walk you through the basics of the Orthia's interior. Of course, it's only available in right-hand drive. These are all right-hand drive vehicles. They were made in Japan for Japan. Although you could, in theory, convert this over to a left-hand drive model with a dash, pedals, brake booster assembly, everything from like a left-hand drive EK Civic. Inside of this car, you will find a total of 14 different storage compartments, and they are as follows. The glove box, coin box, driver's pocket, pop-out dash pocket, lower console pocket, ashtray, console tray, driver's side seat tray, passenger side seat pocket, rear armrest cup holder, and visor card holder. If you run out of places to put stuff, it's your own fault. However, with that said, it is important to note that the cup holders here are not designed with American cups in mind. As a matter of fact, they can only fit a small drink on occasion. More than likely, the only thing you're gonna be putting in these front cup holders are going to be a can or a very small bottle. Not even a regular sized bottle of water will fit in here upright with the cigarette lighter attachment or a USB charger, for instance, plugged up. As far as driver assistance goes, there's not really much. Matter of fact, the 1996 models didn't even have ABS. None of these cars came with cruise control, although you do get some other features. The features you do get are a fog light button and power folding mirrors on top of power windows at all four doors, which is nice to have. You had a choice of three different radio options in the Orthia. The first, which is the most popular, is a AM FM radio with a knob for the volume and buttons for tuning pretty basic stuff. Next you had an optional tape CD player or tape CD player combo with the standard radio. Lastly, the top radio offered was a GPS satellite radio with cassette and CD players. Uh, keep in mind this car is made in 1996 by Honda. This is not some newer Mercedes model. This is a car that was made in Japan back 25 plus years ago. 
I still find it incredibly odd that a company like Honda would feature something like GPS back in the day. They had it before we had it as far as mainstream models go. There are a total of four speakers inside of the Orthia. You have two in the front doors and two in the back in the trunk area. They're all your standard front door speakers from a Honda Civic, for instance, just six inch speakers. We've got mine in here upgraded to a kicker audio set along with a Bluetooth player, which if you're interested in getting something like this with a block off plate for your Honda, there will be a link down below where you can go get one. Moving to the back of the Orthea, you can see that even with my driving position, and I'm 6'2", I still have a place to put my legs, and I do have a decent amount of headroom as well. It's really not a bad place to be, although there really aren't any sort of creature comforts back here, other than the fact that you do get a cup holder, which is nice, but it's only the one cup holder, uh, and it has a cutout in it for a drink, again, two small cups at best definitely not putting two big gulps back here and fitting them in this tiny cup holder also honda does give you a seat belt for the middle seat here but as far as grown adults go i would not run down the street with more than two people back here at a time three people in a pinch maybe kids yeah three kids uh, but definitely just two adults for comfort's sake back here. Here I'll also demonstrate that the rear seats fold down in a 60-40 split combination. Now you already have a lot of cargo room in the back, but if you need even more, this does give you the opportunity to do so. And in case you've got something that's rather long and you have a third occupant, for instance, you can do so and still somewhat comfortably as well. Now moving to the very back of the Orthea, you'll see that it is a true hatchback design with independent rear opening hatch glass. It's very handy to have where you need to grab something but don't really want to open up the entire tailgate, you can do so freely. When you actually open the rear hatch here, you'll see that it's very, very spacious throughout the entirety of it. Honda gives you this nice netting that goes right here, which can also be clipped up here for a hammock in case you wanted to have something that was a little bit more, like say damp or something that could roll around. You wanna keep it separate from your regular cargo. You can do so here. And like I mentioned earlier, with the seats completely folded down, you have six feet of length inside of the Orthia for putting long items, bulky things. We've actually carried a Christmas tree in this, no problem. Orthia is a very nice place to be if you need to call stuff around town or just need some extra cargo space on occasion. Before we go any further, let's talk about the model variations of the Orthia as well as the differences. There are a total of six main variations of the first generation Orthia, as seen here in this book, as well as an additional five for the facelift. So let's talk about them. We'll start from the lowest end and make our way up to the highest end as defined by the Orthia dealer's brochure. So we're gonna start off with the basic GX series model. The biggest thing the GX has going for it is that you could get it with that manual. Everything else is standard. Front wheel drive only and no option for a two liter. Other key items that are missing are the seat belt tensioner reducers, keyless entry, map lights, and the leather wrap steering wheel. You could absolutely not option out any of these things from the dealership as per their brochure. There's nothing in this that shows anything that you can get on the other variations that you could put on to the base model. It's just, that's the way it came from the dealership. There's not many other options you can put on it after the fact. One last thing that's kind of important to note on the base model spec, if you're looking at a chassis code, it will be notified as EL1. So you have EL1, 
EL2 for the mid grade and EL3. And we're gonna go over those variations here as well. So now step up to the two liter GX and you get the nice torque bump like we mentioned in the previous section, but no manual offering. In exchange, you do get things like keyless entry, seat belt tension reducers, and map lights that were all unavailable in the lower GX spec. One of the rarest Orthia models is the 2 liter GX Aero spec. Honda had their brochures plastered with kitted out Aero models from front to back. Unfortunately, not many of them were made or bought, which makes them a rarity when they pop up for sale today. The three biggest differences in the Aero model versus a standard 2 liter GX are the ground effects kit, it's pretty obvious, standard sunroof, and the eye-catching interior. The red on black contrasting seats and door panels are highly sought after in the Honda community today and command a high price to match. The rarest of these variants is an Aero model exclusive color called Supersonic Blue. There exists one Orthia known in this color. Uh, also important to note both the 2 liter GX and 2 liter GX Aero cars will have the designation EL2 for the chassis code. Starting with the all wheel drive models is the 2 liter GX all wheel drive, which has mostly the same options as the front wheel drive variant. And the same goes for the 2 liter GX Aero all wheel drive. Lastly, we have the top of the line 2 liter GX S four wheel drive. The only options this model cannot have are the aero specific ones. Two options that this one gets that none of the others do are two-tone body paint and faux wood grain bezels. All the all-wheel drive models will carry an EL3 chassis coat. Orthia model designations are not stated anywhere on the exterior of the car, but armed with this knowledge, you should be able to easier differentiate between models upon a quick glance. One last thing to note is that you will see either a P or a V badge on the back of all Orthias on the hatch. This denotes either a Primo or Verno dealership. This Orthia in specific is a Primo and it has certain features like the 5050 clear taillights on the back as well as a couple of other options that were not readily available at the Verno dealerships. In this section, we're going to be going over some of the specifications of the Honda Orthia. Honda provides plentiful information through their brochures and handbooks from the dealership. So I'm just gonna read off a few specs from this book here that kind of showcase a little bit more about what the car is capable of. The Orthia in its factory configuration, unmodified, stands at just over 58 inches tall making the roof line approximately three inches taller than the EK generation Civic it's based on. The track width is basically the same between the Civic and the Orthia at roughly 58 inches. Coincidentally, that makes the head-on profile of this car nearly a perfect square. The Orthia is a rather long car at 15 feet in length. Of that length, about six feet is reserved for the passenger compartment and another three feet for the trunk space. The rest is taken up by engine and bumpers. The overall interior space is plenty. With the rear seats folded down, you have quite the room for cargo, approximately 72 cubic feet of it. However, with the rear seats in their normal upright position, you have a good amount of headroom as well. The overall interior height is just over three feet from the seat cushion, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, go and measure your torso. You'll probably find that it's plenty of room for you as well unless you're like an NBA superstar. The lug pattern of the Orthia is four by 100 across the board. All models also have the following, rack and pinion steering, hydraulic front ventilated disc brakes, double wishbone suspension, and a front torsion sway bar. There are two different sizes of factory tire. You have the choice of a 18565 R14. This is going to be some of the lower end models for the most part front wheel drive models as well, and a 195-60R14, which falls on the higher variants with all wheel drive. Both of which equate to about the same diameter, give or take a few millimeters. I might be good at most numbers and equations, but I think it would just be easier to show you these next exact numbers. 
take a look at the transmission gear ratio options. Uh, here you can see there's a distinct difference between manual and automatic gear ratios. What's also interesting is that the 1.8 liter automatic GX model has a totally different transmission ratio than the two liter variants after first gear. Essentially, the math works out to about 2,500 RPMs at 60 miles an hour for the two liter automatics. I'll let you guys decide for the rest. Just as with any other car, maintenance and upkeep is crucial to keeping a car running for a long time. And this also applies to these cars from Japan as well. Luckily for people looking into importing an Orthia, a lot of parts are actually interchangeable with US spec model cars. Like we talked about earlier with the Acura Integra, and Honda CRV. A lot of these components can be swapped out very easily, and there's even availability at your local parts store. Before we go any further, I'd like to introduce to you guys my friend John. He's a fellow Orthia owner friend of mine. He's going to talk to you guys a little bit more about the maintenance and upkeep that you might be able to expect on a car like this, and common issues as well. John, take it away. My name is John, and I am from the Midwest. More specifically, I am from Kansas City. What you're about to take a look at is my fine specimen of a 1996 Honda Orthia, in which I have imported from Nagoya, Japan. Once I got back to Kansas City, it was time to do maintenance. And that is when I realized that, you know, the brakes needed attending to. Um, I ended up replacing the pads and the rotors on the front that, that used 1996 Honda Civic uh, components. I also had to replace the uh, axles. And the reason being was because the CV boots on both the inner side and out, uh, inboard and outboard of the, uh, of the axles were torn. This uh, proved to be a little bit of a problem. And that problem being is I thought it was close to a Civic but it wasn't. The uh, there wasn't. There was the uh, the shaft was too small. I then opted for a CRV because I figured it was a CRV drivetrain. Once again, uh, this one the the shaft was too thick. Uh, it turns out that you want to use a 1996 uh, Acura Integra, the B series, the B18 axles fit on a Honda Orthia all-wheel drive. So that was something that I, I learned. Uh, after purchasing and then subsequently returning three sets of axles. So, um, aside from that, other maintenance items that I've done was it's a standard B20. So, I did a valve cover gasket. Uh, I did uh, with which and included the uh, spark plug holes. Uh, I did the spark plugs. I did wires. I actually have a. Um, oil pan gasket that I still need to put on, but it's all standard B20 stuff, so all things that you can find here in the United States. For the interior, um, I haven't had to do much. The interior of my vehicle is very clean, and I hadn't had to make any updates to it. In fact, it had the factory uh, Honda stereo, which included a tape deck. That tape deck, I was able to source a uh, cassette tape to 3.5 millimeter uh, input jack that I, or a headphone jack that I was able to plug into my phone. So now I am able to play Spotify through the, uh, the current factory speakers. The uh, plan, the plan is to go ahead and change that uh, to have a Bluetooth module within the, uh, the receiver. I have yet to do that. Everything else has been pretty straightforward. I haven't had any issues. Getting used to driving on the right-hand side was a challenge at first, but honestly, compared to my other vehicles, it's actually preferred. I really kind of enjoy it compared to, say, like my normal U.S. left-hand drive cars. Thanks again, John. I'm going to set down this comically large wrench for just a minute. Um, I just want to reiterate a couple of points that he was making. Uh, a lot of these parts, again, are interchangeable between the two. When my car showed up, the PCV O-ring, the oil pan gasket down here, the valve cover gasket, 
up here all had a minor leak to them. We were actually able to find all of the gasket sets at our local AutoZone. Uh, not a sponsor or plug or anything like that, but we just went down the street, they had it in stock. We had it fixed the same day. It's really not all that complicated. The suspension wise, we had some axle boots just like his tear up and we also replaced the axle assemblies with Integra axles. Everything bolted straight up, same factory torque specs, same everything as the Integra and CRV. Really easy to work on these cars overall. And now it's time to move on to one of my favorite categories, the accessories. If there's one thing Honda got right, it was the accessories. Not only could you get tons of different accessories straight from the dealership or the manufacturer from the get-go, but the quality of these accessories ranges far over. You could get small things, big things. Matter of fact, why don't I just show you a few of them here. Go through this entire book. It might not look like much, but this book is filled with tons of information and really cool accessories that you just really don't see anymore. Products of their times. Let's go through the entire book. I wanna show you guys a few of these. Okay, right from the get go. Let's open up the cover here. First, you're greeted by an Aerospec Orthia. Again, Honda really tried to push this car to the Japanese public. The text over on the side talks about the car's rigid styling and the enjoyment of both sports and leisure. Of course, this was all just translated over directly from Japanese, so not everything may be 100% correct, but that is what they're going after. Once you turn the page, hey, look at that, more aero accessories. Here you'll find not only the lip kit, but also the performance suspension, and get this, a sports muffler. Yeah, that's right, Honda gave you the option of a slightly louder exhaust on your Orthia to really give it a sportier feel. My favorite parts of this page actually come in the form of the little warnings and advisories from Honda. For instance, the suspension has a warning of be careful of uneven road surfaces, talking about scraping the bumper or the lip. The lip kit itself also has a warning saying the ground clearance will be lower, please be careful. Looking closer at the photos in this booklet, you can really see a difference in height from the standard Orthia. Not only is the car lower to the ground with the ground effects kit, but the car is also lower thanks to that optional suspension. It's listed that the two-wheel drive models receive about 30 millimeters of lowering, while the four-wheel drive models receive a 45 millimeter lower drop. Flipping to the next couple of pages and you begin to see some of the more practical options. You can see on the first page, mud flaps, two different styles of bull bars, smoker's vents, and even a functional tailgate handlebar. Over on the next page, however, you'll see a wide range of graphics and wheels. And no, your eyes do not deceive you. You absolutely could have ordered woody graphics for your Orthia, though I personally have never seen one of these pop up for sale. Up top left of this page are pinstripe options, one of which John has on his Orthia. The vibrant pink and purple colors just scream 1990s. On to the next pages, you'll find it titled as Useful Outdoor Equipment. Again, Honda was really banking on the outdoors adventure type to really take advantage of these vehicles. On the first page spread across, you have an Orthia with an awning attached to it. Underneath it is a picnic setup. There were two optional awnings available, one that attaches to the roof rails and one that attaches to the rear hatch. Moving to the right side page, Honda co-developed these Typus roof boxes and offered them in a variety of colors. These are fairly rare and desirable today. Once you flip over to the next page, you'll see a good variety of interior options that were available for the Orthia. On the left, you'll find optional leather wrap shift knobs, an upper sunglass console, and a sliding armrest for the center console. A lot of Hondas today feature this sliding armrest as standard, but even in 1996, they were very forward thinking with this. Onto the right side page, Honda offered their own branded cushions and blankets. You could even get a trash can for inside of the car. 
One popular option is the air purifier with filters, but the most popular option in this book by far would be the floor mats. Remember the green and blue contrast stitching for the seats? Honda had the option of that same stitching on their floor mats. Really awesome attention to detail. Lastly, an option I have yet to see on a stateside Orthia would be these seat covers. Honda offered a ton of options and even had an option for doilies or even waterproof covers. I especially love the wacky 90s patterns on a few of them. Flipping the page again, we come to the section titled Safety and Amenity Items. There are some interesting options available in this section and keep in mind this car was made in the mid 90s. Firstly, you could option on parking sensors to the front and rear of the Orthia, really ahead of the time for Honda. Other options include bumper lights for seeing around corners, a parking pole to help the driver see exactly where they're parked, and PF fog lights that protrude from the factory fog light locations. The equipment continues on the next page. One of the coolest options was a remote control engine starter that would run the engine for 10 minutes in order to warm it up before you depart. Next is a rear wiper control button that would allow automatic operation of the rear wiper in reverse to clear your vision when backing up on a rainy day. Right below that is a feature I've never seen before, like ever, not just the Orthia, but ever. It's an anti-static plate. You touch it as you get out of the car to avoid being shocked by static electricity. Below that, you'll find options for various cargo mats, including a deep rubber one for carrying around wet or dirty items. Again, one of the options matches the stitching in the seats if you want the blue and green theme throughout the entire car. At the very bottom, you'll find snow-related items, chains, snow-specific windshield wipers, and deep snow rubber mats. Lastly, we have the audio and visual section, a part that's near and dear to my heart here. Here you'll find many different types of gathers, radio interfaces, and CD changers. I especially love the ones with the EQ display. However, the coolest model is featured on the second page. There you'll see an option for a fold-out screen, antennas, and a TV tuner. Yeah, that's right, you could have optioned out your Orthia to be able to watch TV. The final audio options to go over are a powered subwoofer, upgraded speakers, and even the option of a four tape deck cassette player. In theory, you could option out either satellite GPS, CDs, tapes, or TV, and in most cases, a combination of the few. Once you flip to the final pages of the booklet, you'll see a chart of all the different models with various colors and symbols. These correlate to which options you could have depending on your spec. Pretty neat stuff. Also, it shows Honda's internal part number, so you could call your dealer and order up the parts after the fact. Once you get to the back cover, you'll find various Honda car care items and accessories, but the very last thing to point out is the bottom corner. You'll see an ad for Honda's line of credit cards. They really pulled out all the stops to get folks to option these cars out from the beginning. All right, now we've come to the final part of the video where we're gonna go over all of the additional reading material and supplemental guides that you could purchase for the Orthia. I have here in my possession a wide variety of books, catalogs, general reading material, maintenance, upkeep, wiring, all of the reading material that I could find on Yahoo Auctions Japan. Uh, a lot of these things are able to be sourced even still. There's plentiful brochures, especially the ones from the dealerships out there available. So if you're interested, uh, definitely go check those out online. I'd like to show you guys each one of these books in a little bit better detail, just so you can see exactly what we have to work with. And starting with the Mac Daddy of them all, this is the Honda Chassis Maintenance Book. Imagine, uh, if you're from the United States, a Haynes manual that is specifically Orthia related. It has diagrams of absolutely everything. It's about a thousand pages deep. It shows you everything you need to know to repair, replace, fix anything on these cars. Of course, you also have the 1997 and 1998 supplemental manuals that feature things that were not available on earlier models that later models ended up having, uh, which is also really cool to have. So this one being a 1996 model, I didn't really need it, 
but it's still very nice to have and really cool addition to uh, the whole book. And, and by the way, not just this book, but any of these other books, uh, if you are interested in learning more information and don't have immediate access to the information in any of these books, I'm going to leave a link at the end of the video that you can go and check out where you can email us. Uh, we can definitely look up information to those seriously needing help from one of these manuals. Uh, no problem at all. Just wait till the end of the video. We'll flash that up on the screen so you guys can get it taken care of. Next up, we have another very important book and this would be the Wiring Schematics book. Uh, all throughout it, you will find everything from light bulbs to general wiring, every single piece of wiring on this car with the different model variants included as well. Everything's included with, again, some pretty helpful diagrams, although most of everything in this book will be just wiring schematics. It is all in Japanese. It is in black and white. Uh, I would definitely recommend getting something translated if you do not read Japanese. The last important book, I should say, as far as importance go, I mean, like, could actually help you in case you needed something. This is the parts book. If you want a part, it's listed in this book and shows every one of the part numbers that still directly correlates to a database with Honda. So if you need a part and Honda has it, you can order it here with these same part numbers for most cases here today, which I find to be incredibly helpful. So say you need a new bumper, there's a piece for that. Or if you just need the grill surround, that part number is listed too. Everything is listed in this book. I'm very lucky to have it. I've only seen one of these up for sale on Yahoo Auctions Japan. Uh, this thing is absolutely wild. I love just flipping through it and seeing all of the different pieces all spread out. Honda did a very good job at detailing every single part number, nut, bolt, screw, and everything in this book. This is a Honda Motor Fan Magazine. And it's unique because you read through it backwards like you would a traditional Japanese magazine, which I find to be awesome. Uh, in it, you'll find our man, this guy, Jean Reno. He is a world-renowned actor that's been in several movies uh, to note, and he was kind of the spokesman for the Honda Orthia. Not only in this one, but also on this one, and in this one. Uh, he's everywhere, but you'll see him pretty much everywhere you look on most of the reading material that is just dealership related stuff. But it's really cool flipping through this book here. It kind of goes over all of the specifications in the very beginning of the book. And then as you flip forward through it, you'll see that they ran some comparisons against some of the competitors of the Orthia at the time, like the Toyota Caldina. And then also, when you flip to the middle part of the book, you can see some really cool stuff like this concept art, some of the original clay model cars that they came up with for the Orthia, and finally, the final design for the Orthia. And I think my favorite part is going to be the one where they compare the car to the Accord wagon. Take a look at this. You have them comparing the Orthia to the Accord wagon. And you can see here that the Accord wagon is, uh, it's, it's more geared towards the people that are driving their car in the city, just a shop's car going from A to B. Whereas the Orthia, you see the model here with a, what appears to be a blanket and some picnic supplies in the back, kind of showing that the car is more outdoorsy than the Accord wagon. The wackiest thing comes in the back where some guy got crazy with some Photoshop. Uh, I don't even know how to explain that. She's eating the car. Uh, yeah. Dude, I don't, I don't understand, but it's, it's there. It's cool. And flipping through this whole thing is just a whole lot of fun. In the very back, you have actually a copy of one of the dealer brochures, which I'll get to next here. 
This is the dealer brochure that you'll find in the back of that magazine. It's basically just copied and pasted over, uh, but you can read it front to back. I find it really interesting that Honda decided to put that in a magazine, but the actual version has these gorgeous full-size photos of the car. Here's one that looks like mine. So in this last brochure, I love the models that they had used and hired for this brochure. My favorite of which is, it's gotta be this guy, fishing for the fake alligator. Like this, this whole visual of him opening the back hatch and fishing for this obviously fake alligator, crocodile, whatever it is, is just hilarious to me. I absolutely love it. And I'm gonna have to look at my paper for this one to see what it's directly translated as, but uh, they have these little anecdotes that these guys are saying in it, like, and I'm not making this up, this is what it's translated. Like me, it's reliable, basic, tight body, like me. Uh, and again, you can never 100% rely on these translations, it is totally like a Google translated thing. Uh, another key point about the Orthia is that Honda tried to stress that they have deep consideration for safety, while at the same time, they're showcasing the car's agility and sportiness as a sports performance wagon. Which, after driving the car for a good amount of time, I feel like that is absolutely appropriate. It feels very safe and stable. It's got very nice uh, seat belts and the tensioners within them. Uh, but it's also pretty agile on its feet, so good job, Honda. Lastly, there's a couple of other uh, brochures like this one here. There's actually a, uh, a facelift brochure that I happen to have, even though uh, I don't have the facelift car, and the facelift, as of filming this video, will not be available for quite some time. Uh, one thing I did not mention earlier in the video with those different variants is the variants that go from the GX and the GXS, like this one here, to B, M, M4, and L4, as well as the S variant, which is like Honda's sports variant. Look at this, yeah, 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 S-type. S-type variant, it's really, really cool, but weird naming schemes. That's pretty much all the books that we have available for this thing. Um, I guess there's the owner's manual. This thing came in the glove box. It's really, really cool to just flip through it, but it's very basic stuff like most owner's manuals. I mean, it's, it's about 120 pages deep. It's got some good information in it, like fuse panel locations and what the fuses are for, but it's also like pretty basic, like, hey, don't put a sticker on your airbag and don't drive the car over the speed limit. You know, it's very just, yeah, no, no duh, kind of information. But all in all, there's a lot of reading material on this car. I really enjoy it and I hope you did as well. Well folks, that's a wrap for this video on the Honda Orthia. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider giving it a like, comment down below if there's something that we missed that you want something touched on. I'd be more than happy to respond to any of the comments down below with information on this car. Of course, we got all of the information on these models. So if we missed something, definitely let us know. And if you would like to see more of this series, we have other cars available like this Honda Acti. We get step wagons in occasionally. Uh, I'd love to do some videos on those if you guys would love to watch them. So just let me know. Hit subscribe and that helps us out a lot so that we know that we're doing a good job with this stuff. I mean, I really enjoyed doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Uh, and of course, now that we're at the very end of the video, I'm gonna throw some emails and links and everything on the screen right now so that you guys can message us if you're interested in either importing a car or if you just want information on this vehicle that maybe was not covered or if you are interested in learning more about a topic or want to get some more of that information from the repair manual all of that should be on the screen and we'll go ahead and take it off again thank you guys so very much again can't say it enough thanks for making it to the end of the video really appreciate you all and uh, hope you all take care Later.